Good evening. Thank you for coming all of you on the hard day of the year. The reason I chose this topic is most of the people concentrate on the heart. They focus on the heart but they neglect the kidney. Kidney plays important role in the body. As you know, the heart disease is the number one cause of death in the United States. There are 30 million people who have a heart disease and 654,000 people die every year with the heart disease, either with the coronary artery disease or congestive heart failure or cardiac arrhythmia. Whereas in kidney disease, there are 37 million people have a kidney disease of various stages. There are 254,000 people die every year with the kidney disease. Actually, the kidney disease, death of uh, due to kidney disease is underestimated. 50% of the kidney disease patients die of heart disease. Even though they die due to the kidney disease, but they are counted under heart disease. That's why the kidney disease is, uh, is they counted as a ninth leading cause of death in the United States. If you count it accurately, probably it will be fourth or fifth leading cause of death in the United States. Today I am going to talk how the kidney disease complicates the heart disease, how the heart disease complicates the kidney disease, and how to break the vicious circle of kidney disease and heart disease. This slide shows the role of kidneys in a heart disease. You can present with a kidney disease, major kidney disease with a minor heart disease, or you can also present with a heart, major heart disease with a minor kidney disease. But in any case, kidney disease is going to complicate the heart disease. Heart disease, heart disease is going to complicate the kidney disease. I am going to explain to you. This is the anatomy of the kidneys and the heart. As you can see, the heart is located in the chest. In the in the middle of the chest, mostly towards the left side. Whereas kidneys are located in the abdomen underneath the diaphragm. There are two kidneys. Each kidney is the size of a fist. Even though it is quite small, it takes 20% of the blood. The remaining part of the body receives 80% of the blood. You can see the blue lines, those are the veins, which drain the blood from all parts of the body into the heart. Whereas red lines are the arteries, which supplies the blood supply from the heart to the, all the parts of the body. In a human body, there are five liters of blood, approximately five liters of blood. This five liters of blood runs to the heart in one minute. So the heart beats 72 times per minute on average. If you divide the 72, if we divide the five liters by 72, roughly around 70 cc of blood comes out from the left side of the heart to the blood vessels and supplying this. What are the functions of the heart? Heart is nothing but a pump. It receives the blood from all parts of the body to the right side of the heart, right side of the heart pump the blood to the lungs where the oxygenation takes place. Oxygenated blood from the lungs goes to the left side of the heart and left side of the heart pumps the oxygenated blood to all parts of the body including both kidneys which it receives 20% of the blood. So the function of the heart is nothing but a pump. Function of the kidneys Kidney is, works like a filter. It removes the metabolic waste products from the body. Whatever we eat and drink is going to be metabolized and absorbed into the circulation. Non-metabolized and non-absorbed is goes into the stool, which will be eliminated daily. Whereas the kidney is the one which eliminates the metabolic waste products 
Kidney is the one which regulates the water. In a human body, there is a 60% of the water is in the body. If you are, if you are a male, 60% of the weight is due to the water. So that means if you are a 100 kilo weight person, 60 kilos are water. Each kilo is equal to a one liter. So our body contains large amount of water. Whereas female patients, female person has a 55% of the water. The reason is they have more fat cells. The fat cells doesn't keep the water inside. That's why there is a less amount of water in the female person. The water is regulated by the kidney. If, if our blood is thick, that means we are dehydrated, that sends a, uh, sends a signal to the brain to produce a hormone called ADH hormone. That ADH hormone goes to the kidney and tells the kidney to absorb more water and put less urine. By absorbing the more water, you are going to replenish the water shortage in the body. The same way if the body has a more water, your blood is diluted, diluted blood goes to the brain, the brain tells it you need to produce less ADH hormone act on the kidney so a less amount of uh, fluid will be absorbed, more amount of water will be eliminated. So the kidney controls the water. If the kidney is not working, the water is going to accumulate in the body and the kidney is not functioning, metabolic waste products are going to accumulate. It makes the heart function difficult. The other function of the kidney is excretion of the drugs. The 90% of the drugs are eliminated from the body through the kidney. Only 10% of the medications are metabolized and eliminated through the liver. So it is important to know the kidney is the eliminating the medicines. So when you have a decreased kidney function, you have to adjust the dose of the medications. For example, if you are a diabetic, when you don't have a kidney disease, you are getting 100 units of insulin. When your kidneys are getting damaged, as it damages more and more, your insulin requirement comes down to 50%. When you reach the end stage of the kidney disease, sometimes you may not need any insulin at all. So whatever the body is producing, it is staying in the body because kidney is not eliminating those medications. So a lot of people take the heart medications. When they are taking the heart medication, they, they have to reduce the dose of the medicine. Otherwise, toxic levels of the medicine will go up. Even when you are taking the antibiotics, your requirement of the antibiotics are half of it. So it saves some money too. It regulates the acid-base balance. In the, in the body, the blood has to be maintained at a certain pH that is 7.34, 7.35. If it is less than 7.3, it is too much acid in the body. So the kidney has to eliminate the acid and retain the bicarbonate to keep the pH in the normal range. If, you have, if your blood is alkalotic, it is going to eliminate the, it retains the hydrogen ions and eliminate the bicarbonate through the kidney so that it can maintain the pH level within the therapeutic range so all the body's body will function normally. Otherwise, it is going to have a problem. It also regulates the salts and minerals. For example, sodium, potassium, and chloride. Those are the salts. If you have a decreased kidney function, your potassium is going to go up. The calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium are the minerals. So the kidney is the one which controls those minerals also. It also produces a hormones such as angiotensin, which is, causes the high blood pressure by constricting the blood vessels. There is a hormone called erythropoietin, which stimulates the bone marrow to produce more blood cells. If you have a kidney disease, sometimes the patients may present with anemia. Sometimes patients are referred to the gastroenterologist thinking they are losing the blood, but actual reason is 
the kidney disease is the cause for the anemia. Vitamin D, in the body, kidney is the one which activate the vitamin D from inactive form to active form. You need the active form of vitamin D to maintain your calcium and bone problems. So the kidney is the important one for the bone diseases. So that's why most of the kidney disease patients do receive the vitamin D. Can you say, can you tell now the heart is, heart is only the pump, kidney is the most important thing in filtering the, <laughs> all the chemicals? It is like a water treatment facility in one of the cities. So the pump is going to bring the water from the Mississippi, muddy Mississippi River to the facility, whereas where the water is purified, remove the chemicals and the bacteria and all those things, and the water treatment facility is going to supply through the community. It is like that. Okay, the heart and kidney needs each other. The heart and kidney work hand in hand when it comes to your blood supply. The heart is responsible circulating the oxygenated blood to all parts of the body, including the kidneys. The kidneys are responsible for cleaning the blood, for removing the water and waste. If the blood is not filtered through the kidneys, it will contain too much water and waste. This would make the heart less efficient and work harder to compensate and at certain point it would stop functioning altogether. The kidneys need the heart to function and the heart needs the kidneys to function properly. So they need each other. Even heart doesn't function, the heart is not pumping, the, the kidney is not going to receive the blood. If the kidney is not going to clean the blood, heart is going to have a problem. So they need each other. The heart disease in the United States, heart disease is the leading cause of death, number one leading cause of death in the United States. As I said, we have 10% of the pop adult population has a heart disease, that is 30 million people. 650,000, 659,000 people die every year due to the heart disease. Coronary artery disease is the most common type of heart disease which is around 360,000 of people die. Almost 18.2 million has the coronary artery disease. Almost 10 million does have the congestive heart failure. Remaining can be the uh, cardiac arrhythmia and all those things. We are spending around $360 billion every year for the heart disease. Okay, kidney disease. Kidney disease is the ninth leading cause of death in the United States. As I said, ninth, actually it is four or five if you count the really well. 37 million people, that is 15% of the people do have a cardiac, uh, cardi chronic kidney disease, most are undiagnosed. 90% of the kidney disease patients are not diagnosed. Out of 90, 40% of them are not diagnosed, even, they, even when they reach to the close to the reaching the dialysis stage. So the reason is you don't have the symptoms like heart. If you have a heart problem, you have a chest pain, a shortness of breath, not able to walk, all those things. Whereas kidney, kidney try to compensate by working hard to keep the chemicals with under control. But once it reaches to 10% of the kidney function, 90% is lost, 10% cannot compensate anymore, then the chemicals are going to accumulate and water is going to accumulate, then you are going to become asymptomatic of a kidney disease. That's why most people miss the diagnosis. A lot of people come to the kidney doctor before they needed the dialysis. If they come much earlier, if they are diagnosed much earlier, we can delay the process or we can prevent the process of kidney disease, which in turn will help the heart disease. Here, 50% of the people with the kidney disease are dying of heart disease. That's why the less number of people are counted in the kidney disease. So, 
what are the major causes in the kidney disease what are the major causes in heart disease hypertension and diabetes are the major causes we do have a 116 million people in the united states adults having a hypertension but roughly 48 percent of the people adult people do have a high blood pressure whereas diabetes we do have a 10%, 10.9 percent of the people has diabetes. That is almost 30, 34 million. These two, hypertension is the cause 25 percent of the kidney diseases. Diabetes is the cause for 50 percent of the kidney diseases. There is another disease called glomerulonephritis that is responsible for 20 percent of the causes for the kidney disease. High cholesterol does causes by thickening of the blood vessels and narrowing of the blood vessels. But cholesterol is not the major factor. Hypertension, diabetes, glomerulonephritis are the major factor for the kidney disease. Whereas heart disease, 50 to 60 percent of the people do develop the heart disease because of the hypertension. A lot of people doesn't know they have a hypertension. They are diagnosed when they are admitted in the hospital, when they check, like we checked it here. So that is the, they don't have any symptoms also either. It is a silent killer. Hypertension causes. There are 38% of the adult population has a high cholesterol about 200. That means about 90 million people has a high cholesterol. High cholesterol and hypertension and diabetes are the major causes of heart disease. Here, major causes hypertension in both, diabetes in both, high cholesterol affect both, whereas in kidney disease, glomerulonephritis. Most of the major causes are the same in both the diseases. Let us see the risk factors. Heart disease is a risk factor for the kidney disease, whereas kidney disease is a risk factor for the heart disease. Family history of kidney disease, one of the family members has a is on dialysis or kidney transplantation, they should worry about other family members. There is a good chance of some of the other family members having a kidney disease. Whereas the family history of heart disease is, is, is a risk factor. Obesity is the biggest risk factor. Obesity means, that doesn't mean you are overweight or anything. You need to measure the body mass index. How do you derive the body mass index? Your height multiplied by weight. That gives the body mass index. If your body mass index is less than 18, you are underweight. If the body mass, ma mass, mass is between 18 to 24, you are healthy weight. You are in the healthy weight range. Your body mass is 25 to 30, you are overweight. Your body mass is more than 30, you are obese. We are counting here body mass above 30. We do have a 90 million people obesity. Almost 38% of the adult population has obesity. Obesity is causing the diabetes. Obesity is causing the high blood pressure, obesity is causing the heart disease, obesity is causing the high cholesterol, obesity is causing the cancer. So this is the biggest risk factor in the United States. Along with this, physical activity. A lot of people don't do any physical activity. That's why they gain weight, they became obese. And a poor diet, we don't follow the diet properly, Fat diet contain, causes the high cholesterol. High sodium diet causes the high blood pressure. High protein diet can cause the kidney disease. And high potassium diet ca cause problem with the kidney disease. So poor diet, obesity, and physical activity, we can control this if we educate the people really in the early stage, early. Or, uh, in the United States, our focus is misplaced. We complain sex education at the age of third grade. 
we want the gender education we want the uh, work education and all those things nobody pays much attention how to educate the high school kids if you take a two or three classes one one hour each one we can educate all these people what are these obesity and not having the physical activity having a poor diet what it is going to cause in their future life what it is going to cost the life how how their employment is going to be affected all those things we focus on wrong things rather than right things i don't want to go to into politics but this is really important obesity physical activity and diet smoking is is a risk factor getting old is a risk factor in both sides so all the risk factors are more or less the same on both sides except the heart disease and kidney disease so since we have a major causes of kidney disease major cause of heart disease are more or less the same we have the risk factors are same when you have these two things your heart disease and kidney disease does coexist when you are diagnosed with the heart disease you have a kidney disease when you diagnosed with kidney disease you have a heart disease so how many people how many people who has a heart disease know their kidney function so very very few people so very how many people with kidney disease go and see the heart disease doctor so okay this is the vicious circle of the kidney and the heart disease before i go into that i need to educate you about the blood pressure how the blood pressure comes as i said you have a 5 liters of blood in your body the 5 liters of blood has to circulate through the heart in a minute time and send it to the blood vessel that is going to create a pressure in the blood vessels suppose if you have a five instead of 5 liters you have 7 liters of blood due to 2 liters of fluid in your body either due to your using too much salt your kidney is uh, not filtering all the water or your blood vessels are narrowed so nevertheless 7 liters of blood has to go through the same blood vessels your blood pressure is going to go up so your you have a normal amount of 5 liters of blood if your blood vessel is narrowed due to the high cholesterol loses the elastic power of the blood vessel or your blood vessel is constricted because of the kidney producing a hormone angiotensin it is causing the constriction you can have a normal blood pressure your blood vessels are narrowed or constricted you can have a high blood pressure blood pressure is equal to cardiac output multiplied by peripheral resistance those are the two factors when you when you are diagnosed as a high blood pressure first thing the doctor does is he gives the water pill to get rid of the water from your body instead of 7 liters of blood he, he want to bring it to 5 liters and also he give the medication vasodilator the blood pressure medication that dilates your blood vessel that accommodate the, even if you have a more blood instead of 5 liters even if you have 6 liters of blood so those are the two reasons why the doctor gives the water pill if that is not controlled then give the vasodilators so the kidney is here heart is here the kidney when you have a kidney disease the kidney is not filtering the water water is going to accumulate kidney is producing the hormone these two together causes the high blood pressure the high blood pressure also causes the kidney damage it causes the shrunken kidneys and it causes the it causes the it, it will worsen the kidney disease this hypertension if the heart has to work again as the high blood pressure heart has to work again as the pressure inside the blood vessel it is like squeezing a rubber ball to develop your deltoid muscle or raising the weight by raising the weight you are going to develop the muscles of the upper body the same way the heart is going to get hypertrophy the heart muscles get thick and it need more blood supply than it was in normal shape so here is the heart is enlarged and it need more blood supply and the cholesterol high cholesterol is blocking the coronary blood vessels 
and causing the heart attack. With the heart attack, the heart muscles are getting weak and the heart muscle getting thick and enlarged. So this leads into the congestive heart failure. So the, in the congestive heart failure, the heart is not pumping the blood effectively out. Instead of sending the blood 70 cc of blood from the left ventricle, it is only sending the 50 cc of blood from the left ventricle each time when it beats. When that happens, the kidney is getting a less blood supply. It's supposed to get the 20% of the blood supply, 20% of the 50 cc is going to be less. The kidney senses, hey, we are having a less some amount of fluid in, your, in the body because less amount of blood is coming to the kidney, it is going to retain more fluid. So it, actually you already have more fluid, but because, the kidney, because of the congestive heart failure, kidney is retaining more water. So it further adds the congestive heart failure. So it becomes a circle. Kidney is caused the hypertension. Hypertension leads to cardiac enlargement. Cardiac enlargement with the heart attack causes the congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure causes the further kidney problem. So it becomes a circle. So how to break this circle? You need to break the circle here, not to develop the high blood pressure. You need to use the water pill, diuretic, to get rid of extra amount of fluid from the body. You need to use the antagonistic for angiotensin or vasodilator to dilate the blood vessel so your blood pressure can be brought it down. When you bring the blood pressure down, your kidney function also get better. When, it, when you brought it down, your heart doesn't have to work hard against the resistance. So the heart does not develop the hypertrophy of the muscles, doesn't get enlarged heart, and enlarged heart doesn't require more blood. If, if you are not enlarged, if your muscles are not big, it doesn't require more blood supply. So by controlling the cholesterol, you can also decrease the uh, coronary artery disease. Here in congestive heart failure, you try to get rid of the fluid as much as you can with the diuretics and also give the medications which increases the contractivity of the heart by squeezing the blood out much easier. So like a lenoxin or any of the congestive heart failure medications, they can use it and cut down here. So you need to break this vicious circle Otherwise, it keeps on heart disease causing kidney, kidney disease causing heart, so eventually death. How to protect your heart and kidneys? First thing is you have to take in charge of your health care. So nobody cares more than yourself. Doctors see you, you pay the money, he forgets. So you are the person who need to take care of your own health. You should be the in charge. And also you need to write down what are the diseases you have. You have diabetes, you have a high blood pressure, you have a heart disease, you have cholesterol disease, cholesterol problem, or a kidney disease. If you are having all these diseases, write down what are you taking for blood pressure. You are taking the diuretics, what is the name of the diuretics, and also you are taking the vasodilator, name of the medication, and write down in the brackets diuretics to get rid of water from the body. The blood pressure medication dilate the blood vessels. Same way, insulin, diabetes, insulin to reduce the blood sugar. The Lasix for a heart medication is strengthen, strengthen the heart or it eliminate the water if it is a water pill. You need to write down all the list of your problems. You need to write down each and every medication, which medication is going to which disease. And you need to write down the doctors. You have three or four doctors or five doctors, who knows. So each doctor should be assigned to a particular thing. Your diabetic doctor should take care of the diabetes. Your blood pressure, you should take care of the nephrology, should take care of the blood pressure. Your heart doctor should take care of the cardiac problems or congestive heart failure. The problem is the doctors doesn't communicate that well. Okay, a good doctor see the patient, he sent the report to all the doctors who are following this patient. So he is going to say that I am following the kidney, 
I'm giving these medications, but some other doctor is giving, the heart doctor is giving the too much water pill that is causing the problem to the kidney. Kidney doctor should not adjust the dose of the medication. Kidney doctor should tell to the heart doctor that, A, hey, this is causing the heart problem. It is good for the heart, but at the same time, it is causing the problem to the kidney. You need to reduce the dose. But if I started kidney doctor is changing the heart doctor, heart doctor is changing the kidney doctor, it is a big chaos. You need to be the referee. You need to be the manager. You need to control. If you have a kidney problem, call the kidney doctor. Hey, I have this. What should I do? If it is a heart doctor, you need to talk to the heart doctor. Heart doctor. When you attend the doctor's office, you can get a, that visit report. You can take a visit report or you can go to the internet, you can see that yourself, what the doctor has advised you. So if the doctor has advised to reduce the dose of the medication, to the, to the, uh, advise the kidney, uh, heart doctor to reduce the medication, if you know that, when you go to the heart doctor, hey, the kidney doctor told me, or he put the note in the chart, to reduce the dose of the medications. So if you, if you do that, the doctors are more alert, and you are in charge, and you control your health much better. So the bottom line is, you are the one responsible to take care of your health. Take all your prescribed medications, so keep all your appointments with your healthcare providers. Eat healthy diet. If you are a high blood pressure, watch the salt. If you have a kidney disease, watch the potassium. Kidney is the one which eliminates the potassium. When you have a decreased kidney function, you're going to have a high potassium that can stop the heart. If you have a high cholesterol, cut down your cholesterol, the fat. If you have a kidney disease, less protein is better. If you have a diabetes, cut down your sugars. So you need to balance the diet if you have a multiple medical problems. Don't smoke. If you are overweight, lose weight. This is really important. Get a re regular physical activity, regular exercise. Exercise doesn't mean just walk a mile or two miles. That is not enough. When you walk, you are going to exercise only to your legs. When you, when you are an elderly person, if you don't use your muscles, you are go your muscles are going to get atrophy. So you need to use all the muscles of the body. What you should do, you should go to the personal trainer, maybe take two classes. You don't need more classes. $50 each class. He will tell you how to exercise to keep all your body parts healthy and make sure you don't get wasted. And also, the elderly people has a problem with the balancing. The, they fall down because of the balance problem. They broke their legs from there onwards downhill. So he will also show you simple exercises to balance, to learn how to balance. So I think that is important. If you don't use the upper extremity muscles, your muscles are going to be wasted. If you use only lower extremity, lower extremities are okay. And also you need to use the back muscles, otherwise you are going to have back problems. There is a way to do all these things at home with the simple instruments. You don't have to spend a lot of equipments or any of those things, simple things. You can do that. I think anybody who is above 65, they need to start doing, the, doing these exercises. Learn how to manage your and reduce the stress. Each person has a different stress. So you have to manage your own. Don't use the herbal supplement as they cause the kidney disease. Avoid using the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. The anti-inflammatory agents, if you use it on a chronic basis, every day for a long time, it is going to cause the damage to the kidney. Once in a while you have a knee pain or back pain, when you use the uh, Motrin or um, any non-steroidal arthritis medications, they won't cause that problem, but the chronic use is going to cause a problem to the 
with this. This is the most important thing. What you need is, you need to spend $100, buy a weighing machine, buy a blood pressure machine, buy a pulse oximetry, buy a dermometer. One fam in one family, if you have all these four, you can avoid half of the uh, office visits or, or the emergency room visits or the express care visits. So I will, I will tell you how to do that. Control the blood pressure, control the blood sugar and congestive heart failure and fluid intake. Every day when you take a shower, keep the weighing machine next to the shower and weigh yourself, be naked, weigh yourself. That way you will have accurate weight rather than having a different kinds of clothes, heavy clothes, uh, less heavy clothes and all those things that doesn't give. Just as, as soon as you come out of the shower, weigh yourself. If you gained two pounds since yesterday, that means either you drank too much fluid or you used too much salt or you ate too much. So you need to cut down that fluid out by either reducing the amount of fluid you are drinking or increasing the water pill by yourself. So don't, don't wait until a week to correct your weight gains. So if you are going to weigh yourself once a week or once a month, by the time you already have a five kilos of weight, that is a five liters of fluid accumulated in your body. So it is difficult. If it is one liter of fluid accumulated in your body, you can control it in the next couple of days. There is no reason why you can't adjust your dose of the medications. If you have a high blood pressure, you know, you know the water pill, you know the blood vasodilator, you can increase. You don't have to jump into increasing the medication. You find out what you're doing. Are you using the extra amount of salt in your diet? Are you drinking too much water? So if you are not, then if you are having any swelling of the leg, how is your blood pressure? Use the water pill, get rid of the water, then the blood pressure will come down. So if you have a diabetes, you need to control the blood sugar by adjusting the dose of insulin. You know how to adjust the dose of insulin. If you are having a congestive heart failure, this is really important about the weight. Before I explain to you the congestive heart failure, you need to know the fluid intake. People don't have any idea what they are drinking, why they are taking the water pill. You are taking the water pill to get rid of the water from your body. But you drink like a fish. What is the use? You are, you are getting the fluid out one liter and you are drinking a two liters of fluid by yourself. You don't know how many glasses you are drinking a day. You don't have any idea. So what you need to do is, you need to take a three half liter bottles, fill it up with water and put it in the refrigerator. So every day you weigh yourself, you gain one pound. So cut down your fluid intake 500 instead. A normal person make one and a half liter of urine. One, one liter to one and a half. And also they lose around half a liter of fluid through the perspiration or through the respiration. So you lose. So your output is one and a half to two liters. So now if you have a congestive heart failure, you need to take you need to take the amount of fluid you are putting out, exactly one and a half liter or two liters. So put the three, three and a half liter bottles in the fridge. You drink from that bottles, including your medications also. And count your uh, soup, count your coffee and everything in that. So if you gained one kilo, one pound more, that means you can do any of these things. You can cut down your fluid intake, you can increase the Lasix, or you can increase the, any of those things. So if you control your weight every day, every week, then you, the chance of developing a, further aggravating the congestive heart failure is unlikely. 
When you don't check yourself, your weight and all those things, you gain 10 pounds, 20 pounds, then you go to the doctor and get admitted in the hospital, use the diuretics and all those things. So you can able to control the congestive heart failure very easily. So adjust the dose of the medications to make sure since you have a kidney disease, you have to adjust the dose of the medications, otherwise they will be toxic. Avoid any nephrotoxic medications. Some of the medications can cause the damage to the kidneys. Make sure you don't take those medications unnecessarily. If you need it, use it cautiously. Diuretics. There are two kinds of diuretics. One is the potassium sparing diuretics. That means those diuretics retain the potassium. The other diuretics, loop diuretics, they don't retain the potassium. So for a heart diseases, some of the doctors do give the potassium sparing diuretics. When you have a kidney disease, your kidney is not eliminating the potassium out. So you are on the top of it, you are using the potassium sparing diuretics, which retain the more potassium while eliminating the water out. That can cause the high potassium level, cause the effect. You can use it. I'm not saying you can't use the potassium sparing diuretics. The heart doctor likes it because it has a protection to the heart. But you have to use it cautiously, watch your potassium and all those things. You put, him, put the patient on potassium sparing diuretics, let them come after a month. By the time the kidney function goes down, or potassium goes up. Potassium can stop the heart. So diuretics, there are two, two types of diuretics. You can use both in a combination also, but you have to be careful. This is the most common problem with the heart doctor and kidney doctor not able to adjust. Heart doctor increases the, increases the diuretics to make you dry. So that way you don't develop the congestive heart failure, which is true. But the, at the same time, you have to look for the kidney. If you are dehydrated, your uh, cardiac output is less. If your kidney is getting only 50 cc of blood, kidney is going to be affected. So you have to balance, you have to balance. And moreover, your blood pressure, you need to maintain the blood pressure at least 100 for the kidney to perfuse or kidney to function well. The heart doctor thinks by bringing the blood pressure as low as you can, 80, 90, but those people do have a dizziness. So if you, have a, if you bring the blood pressure down to protect the heart, these patients are going to fall down and break their legs. Others also, their kidney functions are going downhill. So when you start the patient with a patient admitted with a congestive heart failure in the hospital, you start at a high dose of diuretics, you send them same dose of diuretics, you don't need the same dose of diuretics forever. Once your weight has come down, you need to adjust the dose of the diuretics, such a way you don't have an effect on the kidney. But if you are going to give a three months visit, by the time this guy's kidney is gone, then you do the blood test, then you send it to the kidney doctor. So the follow-up is important. You should take care of yourself Hey, I have, I'm admitted in the hospital with congestive heart failure. At that time, my weight was 100 kilos. So I lost 10 liters of fluid. My weight came down to 90 kilos. Now I feel better. I breathe better. I don't have any swelling of the legs and all those things. So now you don't need that dose of the medication, the, your doctor. You need to ask the doctor, hey, I need to adjust the dose of the medication. So you need to be careful. So because here the kidney and the heart, they need each other, but at the same time you are looking only the heart point of view, not looking for the kidney point of view, then you are going to have a kidney problem. This, I'm not picking on the heart doctor. The same thing on the kidney doctor, he has to take care of the, make sure the medication is quite adequate and all those things. So anytime, when you are treating the patients for blood pressure or congestive heart failure, make sure the patient is able to walk without any dizziness. 
You can make your heart better or kidney better if they are feeling dizzy with the controlling the blood pressure medication. They are going to fall down and break their legs. So you need to look overall aspect. If the doctors are not looking, it, previously the primary care doctor used to watch everything. Now it is a piecemeal care. Heart doctor, tunnel vision, heart, kidney doctor, tunnel vision, kidney. Who is taking care of combinations? You, you will be the one who need to manage all these things. So nobody else is going to do your job, do the job. Because their time is, they have 30 patients lined up, you have 15 minutes time, you need to keep going, keep going. So, and also when, are going, when you are going to the doctor, write down what are the important things. Don't write down all the junk. If you write down so many things, as soon as you take out the paper, oh my God, she is going to take me half an hour. So write down the important pertinent things to that doctor. So he will address that. If he doesn't address, don't leave until he address that. The customer is always right. Keep in mind, you are paying the fee to the doctor to provide the service. So he's not a god. You are not anything loyal. So you have to be strong enough. You have to take care of the things. So don't be afraid of the doctors. They are, not, they are, they are human beings like you and I. Angiograms and CT scans. This is the worst thing for the kidney. Anytime when you do inject the dye into your vein that is tox toxic to the kidney, don't get unnecessary CT scan every month, every two months. If you go to the emergency room, they will do the CT scan even though you were done a week ago. So don't let them do the CT scan. Even if you need the CT scan, tell them don't inject the dye. You can get 90% of the information without injecting the dye. Angiograms. Don't have the angiograms unnecessary unless you have a problem. If you have a chest pain or shortness of breath, you need an angiogram, go ahead and have an angiogram. And also don't have the angiogram, repeat angiogram within the same month. You had an angiogram today, cardiac cath, and next week you have another cardiac cath. The angiogram you are injecting, the first angiogram is toxic. The second angiogram is more toxic. You need to wait for one month. Nothing will happen. Even if the doctor found a, some blockage, he can do it in the first angiogram itself. So second angiogram, you should wait unless it is a critical. So don't let the doctors do the angiogram so often. If it is necessary, I'm not saying you can't. If it is necessary, do use the caution since you are already have the kidney disease. So when they're having the angiograms, make sure you take the, some precautions. Make sure you hold the water pill, drink a little bit more fluids on that day. And also we do give a me medication called mucomist before the angiogram. So you need to take some precautions because you need the angiogram to see how many blood vessels are blocked in your heart. Unless they are fixed, you're going to have a heart attack. So don't, don't take me wrong, don't do the angiograms. You need to do the angiograms, but take the precautions because all the angiograms are going to cause the. So the other thing is when you are doing the angiograms, the heart doctor tends to do angiogram of the kidney. That is no, no, that is no, no. While, while I am traveling to the heart, passing the catheter, I'm doing the angiogram to the kidneys. If there is a blockage, I want to put a stent. That is no, no. So there is no proved effect of putting a stent in a kidneys. That is going to cause a more harmful effect to the kidney. If you, if you, put, an angio, if you put a stent in the kidney that is going to get blocked, that is completely shut off the blood supply to the kidney, that kidney will be wasted. So only the time we, kidney specialists always recommend, when your blood pressure is not controlled, then only we do. If the, blood, if the stenosis is causing the kidney smaller, smaller, and smaller, then that is the thing. So the routine doing the angiogram of the kidneys 
is not required. It is not necessary, and it causes complications. I have 38 years of experience. Even though the kidney specialist tells, they don't listen. But you need to tell, if you have a kidney disease, hey, I have a kidney disease, don't do the angiogram. You can tell, my kidney doctor told me not to do the angiograms. There is nothing wrong. So you need to protect your kidneys well. Avoid unnecessary procedures unless symptomatic. Okay. You can do the procedures when you are symptomatic. I'll give you an example, my own example. 15 years ago, I had a CAT scan of my heart. I didn't have any symptoms or anything, just, just I want to see what, what my heart. Then they said there is a two blockages, so you need to have an angiogram. So in my family, there are, excluding me, there are four more doctors. So all of us together packed the bags, went to Mayo Clinic. Oh, the doctor said, hey, you, you, you got prepared to come here to have a bypass or something. So what, what was the reason you had a CAT scan? Just I'm curious. That is the first mistake you did. So then he put me on a stress test. He increased my heart rate to 160, 170 beats per minute and did the echo. So the echo did not show any any defect in contraction of the heart, any chest pain, I did not receive any chest pain. That means even though there is a calcium deposition in two spots, but it is not decreasing the blood flow to my heart. So above 60 or above, above 50 years old, you can have a calcification all over the body. That doesn't mean you have a decreased blood supply to your heart or decreased blood supply to your legs. You have to differentiate anatomical calcification versus functional defect. If your blood supply is decreased, then you get, when you have the stress test, you will have a chest pain and also your heart is not going to work, contract well. The same way when you have the peripheral vascular disease, you can have a calcifications but still your blood supply to the legs are fine. If your blood supply to the legs are compromised, you're going to have a leg pains if you walk a little distance. And when you sit, your pain will subside. So what my, the, the, the doctor in the Mayo Clinic told me, don't go to the trouble. And Trouble comes to you. This is the exact word he said. So I put that word here. So, so if you have problems, you have to investigate. If you don't have any problems, don't rock the boat. By doing the angiograms, you're going to cause the problem to the kidney. You can, while doing the angiogram, you can dislodge the calcium deposits or cholesterol deposits and all those things. So. Evaluate your kidney function when you have a heart disease and evaluate the heart disease, heart disease when you have a kidney, a kidney problem. Save the veins of a non-dominant arm for the future dialysis. If you have a kidney disease, if you live long enough, you're going to need the dialysis. When you need the dialysis, these veins are important. So don't let them start an IV or take the blood from your veins of a non-dominant arm. If you are left-handed, save the right hand. So we can use those veins for creating a fistula where your uh, life expectancy is much better and dialysis with a good AV fistula. And talk to your healthcare provider about how to stay up to date with the best treatment and medications in a heart disease, kidney disease, any other disease. So the bottom line, what I want to say is, if you have a heart problem, check your kidneys. If you have a kidney problem, check your heart. The both coexist. 
may be at a different levels, but the kidney disease damages the heart much faster than the heart disease damages the kidney. So, we have, we, I, I presented to you, there are 37 million people have a kidney disease various stages. Whereas right now, only 800,000 of people are getting the dialysis or transplantation. Why it is so small? Because the, the people who have a chronic kidney disease, they are not living long enough to reach the stage where you need the dialysis. Because they are dying prematurely by not, con by not controlling the heart problems. Most of the kidney disease, 50% of the kidney disease patients are dying of heart problem. So if we took care of the, all the heart problems with the kidney disease patients, maybe we can't afford to run the Medicare. So 1% of the dialysis patients take 6% of the Medicare, Medicare premiums, so Medicare cost. So what I'm trying to say is kidney disease kills the heart causes the heart disease much faster than this. So the remaining thing is I'm not bashing any of the heart doctor or any other doctors or anything. What I'm trying to say is angiograms does, it is not a free, it is not any side effects. Angiograms causes the damage to the kidneys. But you can have the angiograms if you need it. You can prevent the angio, you can prevent the toxicity by taking the precautions. You can delay the angiograms instead of repeated every week, next two weeks, wait for one month to recover the kidney and then do the angiograms.